So this is the first year that the SEC is going to feature 16 teams, Texas and Oklahoma. It, it, already a fierce conference talked about that. There's lots of rumblings, though, about future changes in college football. Conference re- realignment is like the hot button topic everywhere. How long do you think the SEC stays at 16 teams? I think it stays there for a very long time. I'm talking 20 years. Okay. I think they are they are perfectly fine with the number they have because it's going to bring them what sixty million dollars a year per school, right? Yeah. So you have to find schools that would join and add value and j- just on the bottom line. So are there out? Are they out there? I'd say no, and that includes Clemson and Florida State. I, I just to, to, for the SEC. Sense, yeah, really. I mean, so I, nope. I think I think for the I think for the SEC. Would Clemson bring that much? Would Florida State bring that much? It'd bring a lot. Both of them would bring a lot. But from a TV perspective, I just can't see how they could top that. I don't see how a lot of teams could top that number. Um, so I think they stay for a very long time. Uh, I think the the big mover is going to be the Big 12. And I love Brett Yormark. I call him the conference commissioner ninja because he, everything he does is actually he, – he's not only saved that conference – I think that he has made the Big 12 a, a, a probably the most interesting conference in the country. So I think the SEC stays. The Big 10 might add teams just for the sake of adding teams, especially if they're academically powerful. But I think the Big 12 is the one to look at because if if Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina can't bring $60, $65 million worth of value to the SEC and the ACC is collapsing, I mean, it's going to be like Pac-Man for the Big 12. And they're just going to load up. I mean, think about that. If you have, if you have Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina in a conference that has schools in Texas and Arizona, I mean, that is a cross country cash machine. And I mean, it's, I mean, that's, it wouldn't bring the Big Twelve to Big Ten SEC status, but it would be, it would be in the ballpark. And and that's all you need. So, like going back to sort of what kind of a, a tangent. Um, if the SEC or if, if we start to see more dominoes fall, especially with these lawsuits, yeah. I think Clemson and Florida State are going to the Big 12, which is so, is going to be really solid. But so but are they going to be looking at similar revenue if they go to the Big 12? So are they are they doing all of this, the lawsuits fighting to get out of the conference to be in a similar situation, but just have to travel across the country? Similar situation, but six years closer to a renegotiation. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, yeah, okay, you might make the same amount of money, but in 2031, when the Big 12 TV contract wraps up, they're going to be like, oh, you have Clemson, Florida State, North Carolina. Like, oh, let's go. Let's, let's, let's crank this thing up a notch. So, yeah, I think that you would be taking maybe even a short term loss with the lawsuits and things like that because billable hours are undefeated. Um, but the gain would be there, I think, way more than people realize. And so do you think, you know, it sounds like you don't think that Florida State and Clemson are attractive enough for the Big Ten. You already plainly stated they're not really attractive enough. Yeah, I mean, that's that's for- 70 million per year. <laughs> I mean, that the thing about it, though, I think SEC 80s and presidents would be making their decision based solely on money. Mm-hmm. Right. I think the Big Ten money would be a big deal, but so would geography mm-hmm. because the SEC has already got the footprints, the footprint. We all know about it. If you're the Big Ten and you can break into Florida or just the Southeast in general, that's a much different conversation. So sure. I think that would it, they, that would not be based solely on the bottom line in the Big Ten, which would, I think, definitely make it a possibility. Um, I guess it would just depend on, on Tony Petiti and, and what he thinks is best served for his conference because clearly that's his goal. I thought it would be different with Greg Sankey and Tony Petiti having this, you know, uh, this alliance. They right. sold it as the best for college football. And, you know, if it's best for Tony Petiti and the Big Ten, and also, I mean, it could be the best for college football for the Big Ten to get down into Florida. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you hanging out with us today. Tell everybody where they can check you out because you've recently moved. <laughs> 
a lot of places. Uh, college football smothered and covered. You can subscribe on on YouTube, Rumble for video, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. I mean, all that stuff. Uh, you can read it out, Kick. You can follow the Braves Report podcast on the Atlanta Journal Constitution, which is a lot of fun uh, for me right now as well. And then Sirius XM every Sunday. Uh, Sunday morning, but also kind of throughout the re- uh, week, wherever uh, wherever they need me, which is going to be in a lot of places now that basketball season is over. Barrett is everywhere is the moral. of. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot like when people ask me that now, I'm like, oh, OK, here we go. Where am I not? That will be a quicker. Comment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, not covering I- soccer, thankfully. We appreciate you breaking some time off to uh, talk to us on our little YouTube channel over here. This was fun. We're going to have to do it again. Absolutely. All right. Have a great day. Thanks. You too.